to go down because we have the legend in the house ladies and gentlemen <laughs> you guys have no idea what is about to happen today i want to start the show thank you thank you father thank you jesus holy spirit guide me guide me okay. to extract amazing holiness awesomeness from mm. this man over here the legend behind all legends around the world you guys have no idea you guys are gonna be in for a treat today my friend my friend, the professor, the legendary James Bentley in the house. How are you, sir? I'm outstanding, my friend. How you been? I'm doing phenomenal, my brother. <laughs> phenomenal. You have no idea. Guys, let me tell you something. As I'm going to introduce my friend over here, let me tell <laughs> if you guys are here for a treat today. Even, at my, even my buttons over here are not working, but today ladies and gentlemen we have somebody over here that is phenomenal mr james bentley entrepreneur best-selling author of the five frequencies of high performance philanthropist and one of the nation's top life and business strategist one of the world's most renowned motivational speakers james bentley has a dynamic personality highly sought after resources in business and professional circles for fortune 500 companies and ceos small business owners nonprofit community leaders from around the world um he also as an annual seven figure earner in the mlm industry and has trained over 80 people to do the same he's behind amazing people just legendary on the basketball team and his home tv show and podcasts and networks and his and his amazing wife kara you know are behind the and speaking of kara let me show you guys how amazing she is they are behind the always amazing <laughs> let me get it right <laughs> i'm telling you we're gonna go into it as i'm gonna share with you guys everything you guys are gonna be in for a treat ladies and gentlemen wow. look at him with all the legends all the legends <laughs> this guy over here man him is like him and Liz bro this is the man behind the legends Mr. James Dentley what's up my brother man I'm, I'm, I'm excited about you. man one, one thing I can say about dude it's always gonna be exciting it's always a treat when great people come and meet <laughs> James, I'm telling you, brother, we're gonna have such a great time here today. And, and, and as you, you guys know, my intent with this show is to bring amazing, legendary people to the show and extract the greatness out of them so that we can share the love. So you guys watching us at home, they are going through something difficult, can apply the strategies that we teach here and go pass it on and go make a change in your life so that we can end up helping so many people. You guys will hear amazing stories here from James. And I want to start with a very powerful question, James, because, I mean, when it comes to speaking, my friend, mm -hmm. oh, my God, that's like your, like, legendary superpower. Wow. You're behind amazing people that from celebrities to CEOs and speakers around the world. Mm -hmm. And tell me something, James. Mm -hmm. The life you live is the life you teach. You are one of the best inspirational speakers I ever met. What is the secret? How to speak so that people want to listen to you? Because that's the biggest problem right now that I see. A lot of people out there, they have a voice, they have a message, but mm -hmm. they don't know how to communicate and how to you know, speak yeah. in a way how you speak, how I speak, so that their message can cross it. Like when now we are speaking, people at home, they are feeling us. So what do you think? What is the secret from all your years of experience and being behind the legendary people like the Liz Browns of the world and all the amazing people that you are connected with? Well, well, first of all, I want to thank you for, for inviting me onto your show, man. I have a tremendous amount of success, respect for you and uh, and the success that you just be creating throughout the world. Your life is really about helping others make their life better. And you know? so just really, first of all, an honor to be here. Thank you, my friend. Um, yes, sir. That's very, very easy to do because it's all true. You know, and speaking is really about becoming fully self-expressed. It's uh, getting to a point of surrender. You know, public speaking is uh, the number one fear in the world, uh, second by death by fire. People would be set, rather be set ablaze than get in front of a room because there you are. And when a person has nerves, first of all, about if they're nervous about speaking to someone else, that's because they're thinking about themselves, how they're going to look, how they're going to come across, how they can remember what they're saying. The first thing to realize is that it's not about you. It's always about the audience. So when you're speaking that you're never the star, you're the director. 
your audience is a star. I don't care if it's a school or if it's your, your local work house of worship or uh, you have a small group of people or even 20, 30,000 people, you are the director and the audience is the star. So the job of the director is to help the star to succeed. So you take it away from you and you simply say, look, it's not about me. I'm going to have a conversation, whether it's one person or it's 20,000 people. The second part of that, Carlos, is and being fully self-expressed is really to understand the psychology of speaking. That's one of the things I've been teaching for the last 20 years. And, and most people never really catch it. There's a psychology to speak not only into the listening of a human being, but into their very nervous system. And you can do that by understanding the, the, the number one natural law of vibration. How do you transmit the energy within yourselves in a very authentic way into the lives of other people? And when you're authentic, people can tell, they can feel it, and you're speaking into their spirit. And it's not just uh, you hear with your ears, you listen with your emotions. It's an internal. So you have to learn how to speak into the individual, into their life. You do that, you you never lose you never lose a, a person in the audience. Nobody goes to sleep, nobody walks out. You keep it exciting, you keep it engaging, and understand that the brain is a closure seeking mechanism. It's called an open loop. It's looking for what's coming next. But if you don't present it in that way, then it will shut off and come to conclusions. So never let what you want to say get in the way of what somebody else in your audience needs to hear. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. I'm mm -hmm. reflecting over here as you are saying all this because I always tell people around the world and nothing sells more than caring and serving, mm -hmm. right? Because people can see all through the BS and that's why a lot of people out there, they are, you know, they whenever they go on a show or they go on TV or they go on a stage, they go with that intent. They look at the audience, James, as mm -hmm. if they are just numbers, right? They're mm -hmm. looking at it as percentages. And yeah. I, I just know from several times that you and I have the I have the honor to share so many stages around you. And we always get the most people come and talk to us once after we are done speaking. Yeah. And I see that it, because you, you and I care such on a deeper level. Yeah. And it's beyond. It's like we 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 really don't care if they're gonna you know, get buy our book or join a program or do none of that stuff. And it, it, it all goes back to emotions, James, right? Yeah. And how, I mean, how did you always stay in such in a beautiful, like emotional state, right? And what is some exercises that you can share with the audience to bring it like that best, those emotions? Because that emotion yeah. is going to create the emotion, mm -hmm. right? If we're talking mm -hmm. down all the time, we wake in the morning, oh man, everything sucks. Yeah. You know, when is this cover going to end? And when mm -hmm. is this going to be over? Are they going to like my show? Are they going to comment? Are they going to, oh, nobody click on the like. And you know, me asking Les Brown that question at the beginning of his career. My brother Les, at the beginning, nobody click on your YouTube channel. He said, nope. You know, <laughs> it went months without people clicking it. And now yeah. he had more than 4 billion views. And mm -hmm. that's one of your dear friends. You guys are brothers mm -hmm. and you've been behind him. And so what do you think um, some exercises and what do you do? You always, you're always in a beautiful state, man. I never see you angry and upset. Mm -hmm. And on that stage, <laughs> it's almost like you speak and you preach and people cry, people get fired up. You know, mm -hmm. it's like me just by seeing you, if I see a photo of us together, it gets me fired up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, first of all, you have to put yourself in the right state. Uh, number one, before you show up to speak, you you practice, you rehearse, you you understand what you want to achieve and what outcomes you want to create. And you you're speaking in uh, as a hired speaker. You definitely want to find out what outcomes whoever's hiring you wants to create. But you can bring people into into your talk. You make them active participants into it, you know, because you want to shift the energy in the room by the way that you get people to move their body. But before you even begin is how you channel your energy, because energy is everything and everything is energy. And you can transmit that energy uh, right through the screen or from an audience. It can be 20,000 people. People in the back will still feel you because it's very authentic because energy is so real. Now, I also teach people about the personality traits, and that's important because you know how to speak into the listening. You're speaking the language of the individuals in the room. And there's four basic personality traits, and we all have all four, but we're anchored usually in one, two, and sometimes three of them. The more personality traits you're anchored in, that broadens out the scope of the people that you can communicate that you will drive in. 
Now, really quickly, you have your sharks, which are very aggressive. They like to win. They're very competitive. They can be money motivated. They like the fancy watches, the sharp cars, and they can be sometimes abrasive. Sometimes they want to win at all costs. Then you have your dolphins, and your dolphins like to have a lot of fun. Uh, they're usually late for everything, but they're the life of the party when they show up. When they show up, man, you can't wait because the fun will begin. You can tell if they have the big, bright smile. That's your dolphin smiling right there. But you see somebody with different colors in their hair or a woman with big, loopy earrings, big earrings or big jewelry. That's the dolphin speaking. The dolphins are usually very unorganized, uh, but, but you know, it's, they're very forgiving because people love them because of their personalities. Then you have your urchin. Your urchin is very intellectual. They like things to start on time. They get irritated when things start late. They don't like hype. They like information. A lot of your engineers will be anchored in their urchin. So when they have that, if you feed them the information, then they perk up because they don't want to be hyped and entertained. They want to be fed. Okay. And they're very conservative. They dress very conservative. And then you have your whales. Your whales are nurturers. They're very soft spoken. They speak in earth tones. They're very soft and they care about people. They, they care about causes. They don't care about the money like the shark wants to always win him. But are we making a difference? Are we helping people? Now, we all have all these personalities, but where's the anchor? So when you're speaking and how you use your voice, you're speaking to all those personalities. And when you're speaking their language on a subconscious level, because 95 percent of our life is driven by subconscious, then they're going to draw into you because you're tapping into that eight year old child that still lives in all of us. The second thing is to understand how to use your voice like the soundtrack of a movie. So I teach people how to go uh, high and fast. High and fast is for impact. When you set yourself on fire, the world will come up and see you burn. Impact. You you jar the nervous system. It creates a, it, it it creates a surge through the nervous system, and people will feel that. And that's loud and fast. Loud and the slow would be for emphasis. When you set yourself on fire, the world will come out and see you. Burn. That's emphasis. You're empathizing, emphasizing. Again, you're, you're creating impact with that, but you're slowing it down in intervals. See you burn, and you you can feel your body move as you go, loud and fast and loud and slow. So if I said it told somebody if I was teaching them, I say, repeat after me: A E I O U, loud and fast. A E I O U, A E I O U, loud and slow. A E I O you, and you pay attention to how your body feels when you're moving it in communication with what you're saying. Now, low and fast is for engagement. That's to let a person know that you know your stuff. They can't write fast enough. They're not supposed to. You're anchoring with the urges that this person knows their business. They own their space. Okay. When you set yourself on fire, the world will come out and see you burn. That's low and fast. You know, sometimes I talk really quickly, but I'm creating anchors. I'm creating anchors within that and triggers within a person to really hone in to, to, to put in what they the message I really want them to have, not to listen to everything I say. So low and fast is for engagement. Okay. So when you want to think bad enough, you got to be willing to go out there and fight for it, work day and night for it. Give up some of your time, your peace, and your sleep for it. And then low and slow is for emotion. When you set yourself on fire, the world will come out and see you burn. And when you lower your voice, your whole spiritual energy or your vibration lowers. And if someone is jacked up and they have a lot of tension, you'll better bring it down with your voice. So remember, your voice is like the soundtrack of a movie. And the soundtrack of a movie is what determines the emotion that the producer and the director and the actors want to convey to the audience to make you laugh, to make you cry, to give you tension in a drama situation, to get a reaction. It's all by the words they speak, how they're speaking it, the lighting, but also the music that you don't even know that you hear, but it's there. And I'll give you one last example. You're looking at a, a, a horror movie and there's a scream. Scream, the guy's got the long mask on, he's got the black hood, and he's stabbing people, and there's tension to make you, ah! Like Friday the 13th, they're jumping out, and or Michael is jumping out on Halloween, and he's stabbing people, right? He brings you the tension. But what would happen if Michael came out with the knife, and instead of, just, and it brings you the tension, you heard, it'd be a different scene, and you take it differently in your spirit. So these are the things that we teach, and uh, 
And uh, we've been doing it for like over, I've been doing it for like 25 years now. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> and, and it's so true. You know what you made? You you made me go back in time, you know. <laughs> for years and years and years, I, I would train like people, like uh, life insurance agents and mm -hmm. people that sell investment plans. And I always tell them about the airy voice. Oh, oh, don't do it. I would I would go like on a stage. There'll be like a hundred of them. You know how they have the offices, whether it's, you know, all these insurance companies. And I'll go, wait a minute. Don't do the airy voice because you're killing it. You already lost the sale. Exactly. You yeah. It. So it's it's the little distinguishes. So you guys listen to us at home. I'm really hoping that you guys are taking notes because James, he's the professor of the professors, ladies and gentlemen. The guy's legendary here. And what he's talking is those little things that he's talking about that you make those adjustments in your business, in your life, on how you present yourself in your webinars is the difference of having a successful lunch versus a not successful lunch. And mm -hmm. James, speaking of training, right? I mean, you created, you know, like, man, I'm even gonna put this over here. You created one of the best speakers and communication program, inspired to speak action camp in the world. Like mm -hmm. by far, like, boom, I loved it. And mm -hmm. what does separate you from the pack, James? I mean, can you tell us, I mean, if somebody listen to us right now, I mean, like why? Why James? Tell us why is that so amazing yeah. and is different than anything else that's out there? Well, for the first thing that I understand and I always try to anchor this inside of everyone that I, I work with is that no one has to listen to us. You know, yeah. uh, we're honored to get a chance to speak and that if we say something that can impact the person's life, that's to be revered. You know, uh, you can't put a price tag on it. That is priceless. Those are the things you get that money can never buy. So when inspired to speak, first of all, we never had to do it to earn a living, to pay our bills and not to compare with anybody else. But if you're doing it as a business, then you have to make business decisions in there instead of people and human decisions. We've I focus on outcome, you know, because I understand that a rising tide floats all boats and I'm stronger when the people I surround myself are stronger. So we earn our way into your hearts, your mind and earn your trust and keep that trust. If something's not right, we make it right. But we stay proactive, always looking how we can become better. When a person comes to action camp, you know, we don't let them worry about the, their meals because that's covered when they're in our live camp. And now only takes six to eight people with that. Um, but now not only do they speak and we train them for five days over and over and over about how to use your voice, how to tell your story, how to craft your story, how to use how to go stagecraft. How do you stand on the stage? How are you breathing? Uh, everything you do, your, your F45, your first 45 seconds on that stage, boom, do you own it? How do you put yourself in state mentally and spiritually that when you walk out there, you're calm because now you're coming out there to serve, not to sell. OK, yeah. and if you're able to create the value, you don't have to ever chase money because you're never going to catch it. It will find you. So the other side of it is that when I noticed that when people would get trained in speaker camps, there wasn't any place to go speak, yeah. especially for women on the stages where there were a lot of men that were selling programs and products and making a hundred thousand dollars in 90 minutes, Carlos. They were seeing guys make a million dollars in 90 minutes. There were no very few women, maybe one or two that can get close, but they couldn't compete. And most women weren't there, especially women and men as well. I might with minorities, black and brown, yeah. and even Asian. So I said, okay, why don't we create a space for everybody? Yeah. So now we said, okay, why don't we create our own events? And we can go through our database, create a, a tremendous amount of value, put it right so the audience is fed, and then give people a place to speak live on the stage. And on some occasions, when the camp is over, we'll have an event that Sunday evening and be 100 to 500 people in a room and they're speaking in the fire right away going at it. We teach them how to develop uh, their products and programs. What are they going to sell? Uh, how are they going to craft their book? How are they going to build their brand? Uh, all the things they're going to need to build the database, because that's going to be the real valuation of, of your company and a true test of how well you're doing. And now because of JD3 TV, we take them in the studio. We can put them on our talk shows, our radio shows, podcasts. Uh, we can put them on every platform. We can help them create their own show. Thank you, sir. <laughs> help them create their own show. And uh, in creating their own show, uh, we can help them actually have uh, shares and ownership in JD3 TV and really press hard to make a bigger difference. So everybody's vested on not just putting things out there, but making a difference and listening to the audience and letting the audience tell us where to go. 
Yeah. You're not going to tell them. Tell us what you want. And together, we're going to go down that journey and we're going to make it happen. Yes, man, that's powerful. That's powerful. Guys, I really hope you guys are taking notes because, um, you know, I love doing auditing uh, for events and masterminds around the world. And I've done for years where I would go to people's event. I would watch as from the audience. I would watch from your angle and I would see how they respond to their responses from the stage. And I learned so much from that over the years. Mm -hmm. and, and everything that you just dropping is so it's golden here because as people learn this, it's magical. And yeah. the importance, like tomorrow, for example, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be doing a segment. Um, I don't know if as you guys know, uh, we are in the middle of the biggest lunch on the history of the internet right now, uh, with uh group funnels. They basically they go in live for 14 days, mm -hmm. um, 24 7 for 14 days and we break in the Guinness book world records. It's the coolest thing ever because they giving away free softwares uh, for life. So we'd be able to give that to the people that come from impoverished areas, from the hood, from the places they can, they cannot afford for software, right? Mm -hmm. And what I notice every time that I go there and they bring me on, and this is millions of people see around the world, automatically that, that what you were saying earlier, those first 30 seconds, what is it? Are they going to keep listening to me or are they going to go away? Are they going to be on their cell phone? So it's so powerful that first 45 seconds, I really want you guys to think about your first 45 seconds. Like tomorrow, I'm going to tell them about the power of the one to three second hook. How powerful that is because so much attention out there. Like right now, right? people are scrolling down and they see an invisible man here and they see the godfather of speaking, you know, here. And then they're like, what the heck is going on? And then they see all these things and this is televised right now around the world. And I want to talk branding with you right now because we were talking about JDTV. And um, here's something you produce, I mean, your own streaming TV network radio talk show host, podcast, and sponsors high-level events such as Limits for Women, uh, Business Accelerator, that's uh, I can remember from the top of my head here, uh, mm -hmm. where everything is possible and inspired mm -hmm. to speak, which is your baby. So yeah. let's talk mm -hmm. branding, James, because um, here's the thing, right? 10, 20 years from now, everything is AI. AI is yeah. going to be the future. And mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that what's going to happen is if somebody needs to hire a speaker, a consultant, and, you know, anything for any industry, they're going to say, hey, Siri, hey, Alexa, hey, Slavenka, hey, Jose, hey, Hahala, whatever, whoever's going to be dominating that industry mm -hmm. 20 years from now. And me personally, and I know you either, we don't want to depend on telling Siri to give us that, that list of people. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about building a brand. And I see you doing that with everything that you are doing. And I love it. It inspires me to want to do it, to raise, because you're raising the bar like to a whole other level because you are doing all those things together. So can you tell us, James, what is the importance of a branding and branding yourself, getting your own network, start the importance of having your own podcast and your own show so that if Facebook and um, mm -hmm. Instagram and LinkedIn, if they go under, now people, they they have a place that they can follow you independent of what happens. Can you tell us about that a little bit, the importance of branding and a couple of strategies on how people can get involved and some advice that you can give it to the, the people watching us? Yeah, yeah. See, people are going to know you and identify you by uh, what you do and who you spend your time around. Um, you know, so you always want to try to work with the best in class. And you can do that by uh, trying to serve. You know, Martin Luther King said everyone cannot be famous, but everyone can be great because greatness comes through service. We live in a very phenomenal time right now in the midst of uh, people say, well, when is this COVID-19 uh, pandemic going to be over? And I say, well, when are you going to be over the pandemic? You know, we have to keep ourselves safe. We have to be responsible for ourselves and other people. It doesn't have to be mandated. It's just something we should do as citizens of the world, as we love our children and our parents, then we have to love one another as well, because if we don't care about, if I don't care about your family, then you don't have to care about my family. And then we have calamity. You know, we have to stand up for what we believe in. And that's part of your brand. Who are you? What do you want to be known for? And if you're not comfortable with where you are right now, you can change that. The beautiful thing about uh, the internet, the World Wide web, information highway, all this stuff, the beautiful thing about it is that everyone can be branded. Everyone. The challenge, Carlos, is that a lot of people don't think that their life matters and what they do matters. They don't understand that, that you know, the world 
positioned properly, a mom who raises four kids has an expertise on raising four children. Even though you go through the trouble, the struggles, the struggles will prepare you to be able to guide other people through their struggles. A person that's trying to uh, become successful and they had they stumbled over and over and over, but kept getting back up and they finally made it and they made it and they, they stuck on all of the things that didn't go right, not realizing that all those things that didn't go right gives them the right to stand in front of people to help them avoid the pitfalls so they can have a shorter and cleaner path. So it's really about serving because ultimately people are going to follow you. And what are you going to be known for? Now, the second thing you have to understand is who is your demographic? Who, what, who do you want to attract by your services, your goods, or your gifts? And where are they right now? That's the question. Now, the first thing I would say is always about the question. It's always about asking yourself better questions. So when you ask a question, anytime there's a question asked, there's an answer embedded in the question. So who are you trying to attract? Who is this for? Who are you relatable to? And then where are they at? Who are they spending money with right now? Where are they shopping right now? Where are they hanging out right now? Where are, what are they doing right now? You can start a Facebook group and start small. And you create community and just serve. And you got a Google that can make everybody an expert. Everything's at your fingertip. This is the best time uh, in my lifetime to be alive. And I think, well, first of all, every time is a great day to be alive. And some days even better. But this is the best time because now everything you want and need to create the life that you want, no matter where it is right now, is accessible to you and is very, very close to you. Everything's here. But here's a secret. It's already been here. So you have to break out, first of all, and ask yourself, first of all, who can benefit from my experiences? I had two ladies, I will tell you really quickly. One woman was uh, 19 years on death row in the state of Illinois. And she's the only woman released from death row after 19 years. They found out through new evidence that she was not guilty and they let her out. Wow. She dedicates her life right now in one of the toughest neighborhoods, helping gangbangers. And now these gangbangers are not doing drive-bys. They're planting vegetable gardens. Wow. She goes back to the prison, the same prison that, that abused her. She goes back there to help other women. I talked to a woman uh, last week. She'll be on my entrepreneur forum next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Her name is Dr. Money. And Dr. Money, as she was sharing her story, she went to the penitentiary. She's on her way getting her master's degree. And she was able to help women get their GED because if they didn't get the GED in the education, if they got that, they were able to get out faster and be able to be in, go back into society and become productive and not behind the eight ball. Jeff Hoffman, our friend Jeff, yeah. he goes into the prison system with minorities. And, you know, a lot of people go to prison. If they're in there for a long time, they may uh, come out and be behind society because of technology. He is teaching them tech in jail. The great thing about tech is that everything comes out of the imagination. If they got time, they won't be behind the eight ball because they're creating a future for all of us. Yeah when you got a clean slate. So the first thing you got to realize is that every one of you under the sound of my voice and working with Carlos here in the treat, because the one thing I can tell you about this young man is that he's a lover of life and a lover of people. His energy is infectious, is always there. And his whole life was about serving and helping people because people were hungry, not just in their body, but in their spirit and their mind and their hearts. They're starving, yeah. starving, trying to find out who they're supposed to be. And then with working with Carlos and the people he brings on the show, I can tell you, because I know a lot of these people that they'll teach you. All you have to do is be who you are yeah. because there's only one of you. Nobody else has your DNA. Nobody else has your eye pupil print, your fingerprint. Uh, with one strand of your hair, one drop of blood, we can pick you out of five billion people and know it was you who did it, good or bad. <laughs> You're rare. And the last time I checked, things that are rare are valuable. So when did you decide to become like everyone else? It's about conformity. People conform. Don't think outside the box because there is no box. There never. If you said, I'm thinking outside the box, you're still saying there is a box. There is no box. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. That means there was no light. He spoke it and the light came. Let the let there to bring the waters on. Everything that you see around you right now was once never in existence from the bookcase, the technology, these glasses, everything, these shirts, everything that you see in life right now did not exist. So you have to start thinking about what's next. You ask that question, what's next? Get around the people who are movers and doers. Get around the people who are interesting. And if you don't create it, you can be a supporting cast in taking that creation to the world. There's always a place to play. 
There's always a place for each and every one of us. And the world needs you. And they need your story. Even when it sucks, they need you. Because they let then you let somebody know who life sucks and they think they don't want to take another step, that there's a hope for a brighter future, a brighter tomorrow. And because you showed them the path. So share your story. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm over here. My mind is spinning. Before we go to commercial, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting some a lot of love in the comments. You guys heard what James just said, man. Wow, what a great, powerful story about the lady from prison. You know, she's it's like I tell people around the world when I travel and I translate to other languages, James, you gotta become unreasonable. Yeah, you could go a knife for an eye, you know, the same way how Mandela could go an eye for an eye. Mm-hmm. But that only does one thing, and it makes the whole world blind. Yes. Yeah. Like people right now find mm-hmm. the hunger. I really can hope you guys are, because I'm feeling it, James, right yeah. now. Yeah. I really hope you guys are feeling them, because you got to find your hunger. you got to become mm-hmm. unreasonable. And mm-hmm. when you become unreasonable, that's when shit happens. You don't need to depend. Everybody right now is arguing about politics mm-hmm. and religion and all this stuff, and they're not talking to their family members and friends. Yeah. How about we put it on the side? How about we just sit on the same table, just like the apostles did, just like the Avengers did, and we just figured it out. What can we do with our superpowers to help more people? Yeah. Independent of what, what were done to us in the past, racial-wise, religions-wise, mm-hmm. or wise let's just put it on the side. Yeah. And become humans and being unreasonable and finding that hunger within you. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, he got me fired up here. And we're going to go to a 15-second commercial, and we will be right back. <laughs> I am telling you, I knew this is going to be anointed. That's why I, I call it the Holy Spirit at the beginning. <laughs> James is guided. And here, here's a personal question that I love asking my, my guests. What would the closest person in your life would say, Tara, if I would ask them, what is one characteristic they totally dig about you? And what is the one that drives them insane? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that, my man. <laughs> well, you know, I um, in my life, give me some. I give you one example. Uh, a few four years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer, and uh, you get news like that. Sometimes, it's like a hit in the gut. But for me, it was a spark to just live better and brighter right now, even more to take it to another level. So when I came home, of course, I have different businesses and, and my wife never sees me stop. She doesn't see me have a pity party. She sees me even more fired up and to keep plowing through because I realize people are watching me and depending upon me. And, and it's not pressure. It's really such an honor because you got to understand, man, my mother raised myself and my three sisters working in the grocery store in the daytime and dentist office at night. I have an honorary doctor degree, but I never was good in school and never went to college. But yet I have a doctorate and I speak to colleges and train train professors and psychiatrists today. It's kind of uh, it's kind of crazy. You know, through my life, I used to sleep in a car and now we own several homes. We brought a a couple of people homes cash Um, in the last six months. We bought two homes for people cash. We've been feeding the hungry. And there was a time when I didn't have anything. I lost it all. And I lost my friends at the same time. So the p- thing people will tell about me is that I don't stop. I am consistent. So in, in goal achievement, no matter what it is, and even if you're starting today, it's like if you put your microwave popcorn in the microwave and you turn it on and push the button, you can't open up the door every five seconds. You can't keep checking on it. You can't get frustrated because it's not done fast enough. You got to let it go through a cycle. Put it in the crock pot. Let it cook. and let it Or plant the seeds. Let them germinate. You water the dirt because in its time, it's going to germinate. It's going to grow, but it's going to be the work ethic. And I think that's what people would say about me is just that I'm always been the same person, always going, just trying to always get better. Yeah, now, what drives them crazy? Oh, we uh, uh, the moment of truth. <laughs> you know, there's a law of familiarity that we don't, you know, you can't see the label when you're in the jar. You can't see the front picture when you're in the frame. And I can teach anybody, but I am smart enough to know that we all have blind spots. And as I am a teacher, I also am a great student. The challenge is, like most of us, most men don't like to listen. We like to talk. We want to talk and give the answer. 
before the woman even finishes out her statement. And I get in trouble every time I do it. <laughs> but, and I, and I, I like it not because I like it because it's fun. I don't take it seriously. I do. I like it because it keeps me humble. By keeps me humble, keep me centered. I've been knowing that young lady since up for oh god, since she was 18. She just turned uh 40. Wow. So I've been knowing Kara for 22 years now, and uh, we've been friends for a long, long time. We've been married now uh, over five years now. So uh, and that's my best friend, and she's a double scientist and a physicist, but she had her stuff together, man. And and we talk about everything, and we did that before we, we got married or we start dating and all of that. So the communication is always there, but it's really about me as a man learning to listen more, pay attention, and shut up. Sometimes just shut up. <laughs> I was speaking. I got to learn how to shut up. Uh, that's why I'm over here. You know me. I know this is sugar coated. All my yeah. problems I talk about live. Yeah, like, amen. For real. And, and like I tell people all the time, guys, if you try to hide it, mm -hmm. anything, it will come out eventually. Yeah. And people will see through it. It's yeah. better to be honest. Like I have a little, um, this is my yellow card, but I have like my little post and notes that I literally have in the restroom. Mm -hmm. You are fat. I look at myself every mm -hmm. morning. And in two, I lose my belly. I would not remove the thing out of there. Mm -hmm. I have you are fat with, with a smiley face because I'm 350 pounds. I'm like 100 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, some back problems and some other healthy issues that I went through. And I don't know if I told you though that they almost had a heart attack. Right. You know, it was crazy. I had a little hacking situation. Yeah. And uh, But if, again, if I, would, if I would be more in fit, then I wouldn't have those type of problems. But and then if I would try to hide mm -hmm. that shit and not openly talk about, yeah. You you just you 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 go into bad habits, you know. And like I always tell people, be honest, be yourself, and be able to talk about it. Because the more that you talk about your yeah. darkness, mm -hmm. the more that you're gonna give yourself the sense of freedom and peace. Yeah. And, and, and my friend James, I was actually that was gonna be one of my next questions. You're talking about Kara, and what inspired you to start with her? The already always amazing, um, with, you know, that you run with your wife Kara. Dantley, the rock star, who is a double scientist focused on empowering women and bringing service and opportunities to children and veterans around the world. Yeah. What did inspired both of you? And another shout uh, for my girl, Kara. I love her. She's so amazing. You two are just yeah. like a power yeah. couple. Every yeah. time I see both of you, I just want to hug both of you and lift you guys out of the floor. You guys yeah, are an amazing couple. <laughs> here. We need more James and Karas around the world. It will definitely be a much better place, my friend. Not just because you live here, you know that I love you guys. And what what inspired you guys to create it? Already, always amazing organization to help. Well, first of all, we love you too, man. We greet each day with love in our hearts, brother. Um, you know, my wife would look at me and she would say, "You're amazing," and I said, "Yeah, but you're always amazing." And then she looks at me and says, "Yes, but you were already amazing." <laughs> so that's how the name came up. You know, it's interesting when I was uh, coming up. I had some successes, but they didn't sustain. And I had more and it didn't sustain. And I got tired of going up and down. It felt like a disappointment. Trying to figure this thing out, I can make it happen, but I would be so unhappy, so unfulfilled doing it. And I always wanted to be on somebody's board for these nonprofits or, or companies because I thought that was so cool, but I wasn't anybody. How was I going to be on, on a board? And now I'm on everybody's board. I remember I used to sleep in a car and now I'm going to be on a board. And I tell you, I was on the different boards for these nonprofits and um, I was invited. I had a speaker camp and uh, four people came and they began to they called me back two weeks later and they were different parts of the country. And they told me about this gentleman. They didn't give me the name, but he did these nonprofit events. And I was I wasn't really interested. I was involved with the uh, United for Humanity, U4G. I you know, put a lot of money in that. It was a celebrity base with Paul Abdul and, you know, everybody else was there, uh, Pink and everybody. And um, so I really wasn't interested. I get a phone call uh, about 10 o'clock one night in my, in my driveway, driving in. It's a gentleman named Ryan Long. Ryan gave me a call. That's, the piece yeah, that's my brother right there. Um, and Ryan gave me a call and he began to talk to me. He said, four people called me about you. And uh, now I know who everybody was talking about. And he had this event that was coming up and they had Halle Berry was going to be there and John Tavolta. And I said, oh, okay. And he began to talk to me about his life story. He was very transparent about his life, about the things he had failed at and let people down. And he found that what he wanted to do with his life is to serve other people. Now, he died in his early 40s in February. We lost our friend. 
Um, but that gentleman saw something in me and he asked me to come to his event in California. I'm in Chicago. And I said, no, nah, I don't think I'm really interested. I don't need any more celebrity stuff in my life. I don't need that. I told him no. He called me back the next day, Carlos. He said, man, I looked at you on YouTube and I'm a fan. You have to be there. So I'll tell you what, if you will come, I don't have any more stage time, but you'll be on one of the panels and at least you'll be on the stage. I got some high profile people. I said, well, who's going to be there? See Halle Berry, John Tavolta, Quincy Jones, Russell Simmons, John Paul Gloria, who owned Just Soul Patron. And I said, okay, I'll be there. <laughs> he had me at Halle. <laughs> So my wife and I and, and my uh, uh, VP and dear friend, Jose Baeza, that I've been training since he was 19, we got some tuxedos and we came out there and uh, and came to L.A. Very quiet, sitting in the room. I, I sat on the stage, did the panel. Only spoke for like three minutes. And it was it's like four of us on this panel. And I just checked it out. And I'm wondering, I said, wow, this place should be about 10 times. This thing should be wall to wall. But it's a very exciting event and got a chance to meet a lot of real cool people. A lot of people already knew. Um, he calls me up a week later and said, when are you coming back to California? I said, well, we're coming back in a couple of weeks. He said, well, let's have lunch. We sit down and have lunch. He says, okay. I say, James, people love you. I said, I was only there for two, three minutes. He said, many loved you. Look, everybody's been talking about you. I want you to be a beneficiary next year. And you and, you and your wife, you're going to start your own nonprofit. We're going to help you get behind you, raise money for a year, highlight you and your wife in front of some powerful people for the entire year. And then he said this. He said, I'm going to give away a new award. We've never given it away before. It's going to be the highest honor we've ever given. And I want you to be the first recipient. Now I'm being cool. But inside, um, God is just speaking to me. And I'm just at a peaceful state, being very honored by this young man. You know, I'm 62. He was uh, in his 30s at the time. And um, I tell you, you know, every time we went back to L.A., we would be on these stages and We'd be featured and, and highlighted, and we did a lot of cool stuff. He never asked me for money, and I'll tell you, he never asked me for money, but I ended up putting hundreds of thousands of dollars into his cause because everything he did for me. And when I got the Legacy Award, I'll tell you, Carlos, to get an award, to meet Buzz Aldrich, the second man on the moon, to get an award with Matthew McConaughey and Ashton Kusher, uh, to be in that same platform with him and uh, Greg Reed, and uh, people of that nature, uh, Brian Tracy, and I was to get the highest honor. Now, he never saw me speak live on a stage freestyle. Six minutes acceptance speech, I lit it up. You know me. <laughs> the rest of the week, I throw him out. <laughs> I was like, okay, you well, don't play with me. <laughs> and, um, I got the Legacy Award, and it really kind of changed my life. But because of that, I understood how I can serve him more. Because uh, with him, uh, he was doing, you, you know, man, every week, I mean, Wesley Snipes, everybody was there. Demi Moore, you name it, Richard Dreyfus. I was able to pass that award out to my good friend, Les Brown, and select Les to, to give it to, and then Richard Dreyfus last year. And I get a chance to meet, and without him, I wouldn't have met you. And the family that we have and the mission that he's put us on, and, and he only lived on this earth a short amount of time. Yes. But he has impacted so many lives. And I spoke with his mom, uh, Donna, the other day. And, you know, they always, they, everybody used to tell me, man, Ryan loves you, man. You, Donna said, I understand, James, you were Ryan's favorite person. And I was trying to stay out of his way when he wanted me to counsel him, but I didn't want to be another person in his ear. Yeah. But we had a great, great relationship. And now I'm still working with his mom and Michelle with their organization. And I'm just thankful to be here because without him, we would not be here. And you would not be my friend. I would not be on your show in front of your audience. And I'll just tell you that Solomon said, um, Solomon was told by his father, David, while David was on his deathbed, he was given the uh, advice uh, to Solomon, who would become the wisest king in the world. And he said, above all things, give honor where honor is due. And I had, a, had to learn how to accept being honored and to be OK with that. And because of that, it, it gave me even more peace and it settled me down to think even clearer. And now we're doing things that are bigger and grander than we could ever have thought or imagined. So it's such a blessing. And that's why we have the great speaker camp. That's why we have great results in our, all the businesses. And that's why we have great friendships yeah. because we beat it with love, man. Hey, Amen. And I just, so many, so many amazing stories. <laughs> oh, man, Ryan, man. I love that brother there. Yeah. Uh, he's smiling right now in heaven and uh, his organization and uh, he loves you, man. You're like a father. <laughs> Godfather, grandfather, everything to him, yeah. you know, and yeah. he's an amazing young man, but so many amazing people together. And that's what his life is about, man. I, yeah. I, I 
like as I get older and I see my kids growing and the kids around the world that, that I help support, and you see them getting older, and you're like, damn, we're getting old. I see the white hairs. And then, yeah, I see you. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> you know, and, and but the little thing, like like everything that we need is already within us, and happiness is closer to us than what we may think. We have the technology. Everybody have a, an ability to get on social media, get on your phone and call somebody, you know, and say, hey, you, would you like to be interviewed? I'm starting a show. You want to be interviewed on my show? Like, you just have to start, you yeah. know? If, if you, you need to learn how to speak, like James have his speaking camp, you know what I mean? If you need to, you know, learn, uh, you know, how to get on social media and leverage social media and do those things, you know what I mean? You can reach out to myself. You know, James have, you know, all those things about network and, and it's just, it's all out there. And the amount of content that we put it out there that most people charge like tens of thousands, I think that's what it also separates James, you and most people, because you are the same way, man. Every time I see you, whether you're on the stage or, or you're taking photos, and you're like, it's truly a, a true student, always, man. You ask questions, you, you, you're not afraid. And people look at you, come on, but you're legendary. And you're just so humble every time. I remember one time at, at the City Gala, you were walking around and you have your envelopes. And I say, what is that? Oh, this is foundation that I signed. Like, man, I'm going to give you all the money that I have in my wallet. And I only had 50 and I felt bad. I, say, yeah. oh, I remember you telling me, 50, bro, it will make a difference in a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I saw the way how you say that to me, I was so happy. I almost like have the happy tears because I felt the love on how and how it was how you say that too, because you're like, dude, you have no idea how much that makes an impact. And then I told you, oh, you have no idea because I went on selling bread, making 50 cents mm -hmm. from age seven into 18 to come to America. And I saw a lot of people that die because of $1 or two or five that most people take it for granted. And I think that was the beginning of our, uh, uh, our friendship. I saw you just walking around mm -hmm. in a beautiful suit, legendary, and you had some envelopes and you were just like chilling. And I was like, you know, and then we start talking and I was just, I'm telling you, man, everything mm -hmm. that I do with the basketball and um, team that you own and the kids that you're helping and the other women and the veterans that you and your wife empowered. And James, as we get to, towards the end of our show, here's a question that I love to ask all my guests. Mm -hmm. 75 years from now, you are 100. <laughs> and 137. <laughs> you are only 125. And <laughs> that's the day that you are no longer here, my friend. Yeah. And I am there. I'm smoking a cigar. I'm drinking some scotch. And I'm listening to ACDC or some other songs. <laughs> and then <laughs> to end, it's going to somebody, your loved ones, your children, they're going to be reading your eulogy. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, James, that, this is how James Dentley lived, which is everything that we've been talking about over here. You lived every single day as if you're less. You know, that's one of my favorite quotes. Live every day as if it's last make every show as if it's your last make every speaking as if it's your last every conversation as if it's your last and they gonna say james bentley was dot 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 what are they going to say my friend he was a not a businessman, but a man doing business I, I i like to make people laugh man make them fight i like to create experiences in my life is about making a difference because there were so many years in my life I, I knew it was something I was supposed to do, but I didn't know that it counted. I was really tough on myself. And I always, I'll say it like this. It's not how did one die, but how did one live? Not what did one gain, but what did one give? You see, these are the merits that measure the worth of every man and every woman, regardless of birth. Not what was their station, but had their heart. And how did they play their God-given part? People will say that James played full out and James made them laugh. I live to make somebody laugh every single day and to know that they're worthy and that they love. So James, he laughed, he loved, and he served. <laughs>
<laughs> I love it. I was trying to surprise you by memorizing how Lance, how, how Lance Brown does that talk right before he's going to go on the jock and he had a chance. I was about to do that. I cannot do it. Hello? He called his mama and he says, hello, mama. It's the one and only. It's My name is Baby Brown. The one, the only, the best of the West. I was about to introduce you like that. <laughs> All your greatness over here is not how they die, but it's how they live, ladies and gentlemen. Right. I really hope you guys took note. What a legendary, uh, wow, man. I just, I want to just, God bless you, my friend. And just, man, I'm just so happy that you are doing amazing, that you are healthy. Oh, yeah. And exactly. We need, man, like 12 more apostles, and yeah. there's 12 apostles go get 120 more Jameses out there. And my friend, um, where can they follow you? What is where are you the most on social media? What is the best place for them to get to know more about James Dentley? I know that you have an amazing uh, show, JDV TV, baby. Should be yeah. announced on that show. <laughs> yeah, yes, UK. Yes, Amen, brother. You know, uh, info at JD3TV.com. Info at JD3TV.com, and every Friday at. Uh, 12 noon Pacific, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard, the James Dentley Show.com. Everybody, the James Dentley Show.com. And you're going to be on a show in upcoming weeks, too, my friend. So, oh, yeah, my friend. I'm yeah, looking I'm forward to it. Right. Right. Yeah. Every person that James, if you guys like my show, ho, ho, get rid of James, <laughs> take it to another level. And, and all these amazing people, like the lady that, that you know was in death row and was able to leave. Mm -hmm reason and so many amazing speakers such an honor to have you here my friend on a friday mm -hmm. thank you so much for you taking the time hopefully you guys at home i know you guys are having an awesome time thank you for all the loving words so many people sharing the love uh amazing friends alex harris and kelly god mm -hmm. will use your willing vessel in speaking through you uh mm -hmm. michael so awesome mm -hmm. man uh, joshua amazing humans mm -hmm. uh mr zuli uh -huh. Carlos Cicada and James Dentley in the house, Easy Way TV, you know, um, just so many amazing people. And uh, we got Todd and, oh, man, uh, Freddie, my brother Freddie. Freddie you know, we got all the legends. You know, I'm just, I love it. So many people here from around the world. And my friend, thank you so much. You know, any last words? Well, you have to have a dream to make a dream come true. You know, when we are born... We're like this empty box, an empty slate. And our paradigm is formed in the last trimester in the mother's womb to the first seven years. Because no child has a download of how to navigate through life or in a family. So it's on instant recall. And our lives are being driven by the same kid because when you tell a kid that no enough times and they stop believing in themselves, they don't stay, it, it, it dampens their spirit. If you tell them that they don't deserve it, they attach that to other things because they can't understand what you're really trying to say. They understand the emotion because they're hearing and listening inside through the emotion and the spirit. So be careful in the words that we say. And if you have a big dream uh, and whatever you do, don't ever suffer from the poverty of imagination. Right now, the world belongs to those who can imagine and, and, and believe and conceive. And what you want, wants you. You'll find everything you need on the journey. You don't have to know anything now. Just know that you want more and try to find clarity in that. Work with other people and spend time with people that can make you better. And remember to stand before your dreams, every woman, every man. In times of trials, always believe that you can. And if you fall, know again you'll rise. When you feel weak, you focus on your prize. So with your faith, keep walking towards your goal. By faith, you keep talking for the depths of your soul. Carlos has his show designed for people like you and me. Follow him, tune in, and trust him. Over time, I promise you'll see. Don't turn back on your dream. To turn back is a sin. You have to follow your dream until you win. I remember I asked God, give me one more chance before I die. I promise I spread my wings and I learned to fly. You've got Carlos, all these amazing people that I saw pop on the screen, and I'm going to hold up my end. You stand on the shoulders of greatness, and I promise you'll win. So keep working hard. Keep doing what's right. You keep working your plan until that plan takes flight. And it's time for you to show up. It's time for us to grow up so the world will soon see. There's power in all of our dreams alive in you as they're alive in me. So these are your dreams, your dreams you must defend. Keep following your dreams. I promise you'll win.
<laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's Damn. the only person in the planet that I would do not ever want to go after on the stage. You know, our good friend. You know. You're not too bad yourself, buddy. I love you, my friend. I love you guys. As you guys, there you have it. You have the legendary Mr. James Bentley in the house, founder of JDB. TV, baby. Him and his amazing wife doing amazing things. This guy is the legend behind the legends, yeah. inspiring so many people around the world. Amazing show. We do those things for free. The way how you can repay us back and eat some of our bread is by sharing and tagging other amazing leaders here with us. And there you have it. And you guys know how we roll. Life is about the mission, never the commission. Life is about contribution. Never acquisition in the days that break you are the days that make you. And you know it, baby. God did not give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and the sound mind. Go speak life into others when they don't see it. In life, let's go, baby. Be the light you want to see around the world. I love you, my friend. Everybody home, God bless you. Have an amazing weekend. God Goodbye. bless you, man. <laughs>